Okay, class, today we're in section 9.1, graph y equals ax squared plus c. Section 9.1, graph y equals ax squared plus c. Before, you graph linear and exponential functions. Now, you will graph simple quadratic functions. Key vocabulary, quadratic function, parabola, parent quadratic function, vertex, Axis of symmetry. A quadratic function is a nonlinear function that can be written in the, in the standard form y equals a squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot be zero. Every quadratic function has a u-shaped graph called a parabola. In this lesson, you will graph quadratic functions where b is equal to zero. All right, key concept. Make sure you read this for yourself and get this in your notes if needed before I begin to break it down and explain. Parent quadratic function. The most basic quadratic function in the family of quadratic functions called the parent quadratic function is y is equal to x squared. The graph of y equals x squared is shown below. This is that u-shaped parabola that we're talking about. The u-shaped parabola. The lowest point or highest point on the parabola is the vertex. So right here is your vertex at 0, 0. In this case, it's the lowest point because the graph opens upward. If the graph opened downward, that is, if the U-shape was going in this direction, then the vertex would be the maximum point. But when it's open upward, the vertex is the minimum point. Downward, the vertex is the maximum point. So here, if we have a parabola that was opening this way, see the one in green? See how it's opening downward? It's open on the downside. And your vertex is right there. So your vertex is maximum. On the blue, the vertex is the minimum. The line passes through the vertex and divides the parabola into two symmetric parts. It's called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry for the graph of y equals x squared is the y-axis, and x is equal to zero. So what they're saying here is, here's our parabola, and here the y-axis serves as the axis of symmetry because it splits the parabola into two equal parts. Notice here is 0, 0. Here, um, x is 1 and y is 1. Here, do you see how right here x is a negative 1 but y is still 1? So it's the same distance from the x-axis. Same here, same here, same distance. There, there, same distance. There, there, same distance. Okay, so once again the red line is your axis of symmetry. Here, this is your vertex. Okay, let's look at example one. Graph y is equal to ax squared, where a, where the absolute value of a is greater than one. Graph y is equal to ax squared, where the absolute value of a is greater than one. In other words, a is positive in this case. Okay, so first thing we gotta do, step one, make a table of values for y is equal to 3x squared. So we do what we've done before in the past when we did quite when we did um, absolute value and exponential, right? We got 0, we got 1, 2, that's positive, and we got a negative 1, negative 2. Excuse me, yeah, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so this way we're representing all parts of the graph. See that? Positive side, negative side, and in the middle. This way, we're sure we're getting the right um, graph for the parabola. Because if not, if all we had were positive numbers, then all we would see is this. And we would think it would be exp uh, exponential when in fact it is not. Okay, now after we write down our values, and we pretty much use the same values every time, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. All we do is we take our x values and we plug them to our equation. When x is a negative 2, we end up with a positive 12. 
When x is a negative 1, we end up with 3. When x is 0, we end up with 0. When x is 1, we end up with 3. And when x is 2, we end up with 12. All right, now also don't forget now, when you plug in a negative 2, you stay in negative 2 squared. So a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. Positive 4 times 3 is 12. All right, step two, we plot the points from the table onto a graph. All right, this should be all old news right now, so everybody should know how to plot the points on the graph. Um, and y equals 3x squared is in the red. All right. All right, next, we draw a smooth curve through the points. All right, so that would look like so. So first thing we graph is 0, 0. X is 0, Y is 0. Next, we're going to graph negative 1 and 3. After that, 1 and 3. And last but not least, negative 2 and 12. And then we get 2 and 12. Then we connect the, uh, the points with a smooth curve. We connect the points with a smooth curve. Now also, we should have already made our graph for our parent equation, which is y is x squared. And that graph was, is in blue here. All right, that graph is in blue. All right, we can use the same points for that, and it should be easy to determine y is equal to x squared. Okay, now, compare the graphs of y equals 3x squared and y is equal to x squared. Both graphs open up and have the same vertex, 0, 0. Right there, 0, 0. And the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 0. Here, we have y. This is a vertical line. So even though it's the y-axis, it really means it's x equal to 0. Why? Because every value for y, x is 0. Don't forget that. The graph of y is equal to 3x squared is narrower than the graph of y is equal to x squared because the graph of y is equal to 3x squared is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 of the graph of y is equal to x squared. That's a fancy way of saying the bigger the a value, the more smaller or the narrower the graph. The bigger the a value, you see the a value here is 3, the a value here is 1. Notice, the smaller one, the smaller a, is a bigger graph. The bigger a, that's the red, is a smaller graph, it's more narrow. Example 2, graph y is equal to ax squared, where the absolute value of a is less than 1. That's a fancy way of saying the a value is going to be negative. Okay, graph y is equal to a negative 1 fourth x squared. Compare the graph with the graph of y is equal to x squared. All right, the y is equal to x squared, that should be simple. Everybody should know how to do this real quick. All right, real quick right there. All right. Now, the reason I say that this graph here, the parent graph, should be real quick because you can do almost everything in your head, see? Um, first, let's let x be 0. If x is 0, then y is 0 because what's 0 squared is 0. So that's that point right there. When x is 1, what is 1 squared? That's 1. So when x is 1, y is 1. When x is negative 1, what's a negative 1 squared? That's also 1. So when x is negative 1, y is 1. All right. When x is 2, what's 2 squared? 2 squared is 4. So we had 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And at negative 2, you get the same thing, 4. Boom. So that should be real quick and easy to make. Other way to do it is to simply graph the positive side. Graph for x is 0, x is 1, x is 2, and then reflect on the other side. Because this right here is your axis of symmetry. Don't forget, the y-axis means the x is always 0. Now, we're going to do the same thing we did in example 1, except that instead of using 0, 1, and 2, and negative 1, negative 2, we're going to use 0, 2, and 4. 0, negative 2, and negative 4. Why? Because we're working with 1 fourth. So we want our x's to be easily divisible by 4. And we can do that with 2 and 4 and 0. Okay, now from there we go through and we determine our values. When x is a negative 4, plug that in right there, we end up with a negative 4. When x is negative 2, we end up with a negative 1. 
When x is 0, of course, 0. When x is 2, we end up with a negative 1. When x is 4, we end up with a negative 4. All right, now, for those who may need help with the basic math, we will show you how to figure out one of these when it's negative. So we got y is equal to a negative 1 fourth x squared. So y is equal to a negative 1 fourth. What's my x value? Negative 4. I plug that in. What's a negative 4 squared? That's going to be 16. So now I've got a negative 1 over 4 times 16 over 1. All right, what's a negative 1 times 16? A negative 16. What's 4 times 1? 4. What's a negative 16 divided by 4? Negative 4. And then, of course, you do the rest the same way. Okay, so the next thing we do, do then is we plot our points here, 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 and here. We draw a smooth curve. See how it's U-shaped? All right, and after that, we're going to compare this graph to this graph. Compare the graphs of y is equal to negative 1 fourth x squared and y is equal to x squared. Both graphs have the same vertex. See, even though this is open downwards, it's the same vertex. And the same axis of symmetry. Y-axis, which means x is equal to 0. And also the y-axis, which means x is equal to 0. Splits right down the middle. However, the graph of y is equal to negative 1 fourth x squared is wider than the graph of y is equal to x squared. But remember I told you, the smaller the a value, the bigger the graph. So one, a negative 1 fourth is smaller than 1. 1 fourth is smaller than 1. So therefore, you expect for this graph to be wider. And also notice that it opens downward. Why does it open downward? Because anytime the a value is negative, the graph is going to open downward. So on this red line here, this right here is my vertex. Here, my vertex is at its maximum. On the blue, on the parent graph, here my vertex is at its minimum. Okay, graphing quadratic functions. Examples 1 and 2 suggest the following general result. A parabola opens up when the coefficient or the a value of x squared is positive and opens down when the coefficient of x squared is negative. Example 3, graph y is equal to x squared plus c. Graph y is equal to x squared plus 5. Compare the graph with the graph of y is equal to x squared. Step 1, make a table of values for y is equal to x squared plus 5. All right, same routine. 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. All right, we come out with 9, 6, 5, 6, and 9. All right, we plot those points onto the table. Excuse me, we plot those points from the table. So this is what we come up with. This is our original graph, the parent graph, y is equal to x squared. All right. Now, what do we notice here? The main thing we notice is that the difference between this graph and this graph is that c value. We got a plus 5. All right. So what does that plus 5 do to this x squared? It causes this everything to shift up 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's the main thing you notice in there. All right, so this is the original. That's the blue. Um, we got a plus 5. So that tells us now that our y-intercept is actually 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it causes it to go up 5 units. Okay. Also notice that when we go up, everything goes up 5 units. Every point goes up 5 units. Everything. Okay. Now, because the graph of y equals x squared plus 5 is a vertical translation of the graph of y is equal to, uh, to x squared. In other words, because it shifted up, because adding that 5 made x squared go up 5 units, that's called a vertical translation. Once again, a vertical translation. 